Yes. He called me yesterday and asked, uh, what's your current status? Uh, I told him, I'm a husband and a wife. <laughs> <laughs> my topic today is not lesson on leadership. <clears throat> it's something called value clarification, which I will revolve around a small story, and I'll take questions on an interactive basis. The story hatches its plot in a small little village in Goa. This village is far away from the urban life and the melodies of township, separated by a blue river and a deep green forest. The people in this village are someone who are very ethically bound and rarely venture to the town called Goa. If they do have to go, they seek the permission of the elders there. The only means of transport from the village to the town Goa is a boat, which does a journey once a day ferrying goods and services. Having said this, in this village live three friends, David, Anna and Joseph. David is a very ambitious person and he has heard of something called software engineer. His ambition is to come to the town of Goa, study in engineering college and land a job in America. Anna, a pretty girl, all of 18 years old, is a school teacher. Now Anna is deeply in love with David, but she does not have the courage to tell David that she loves him. David is not aware of Anna's feeling for him and does not reciprocate those feelings. The third character is Joseph. Joseph has finished his tenth and has joined his father in the farming business. Joseph is deeply in love with Anna. But Raja does not have the courage to tell Anna that he loves her. Anna does not share his feelings and nor is she aware of the same. Two other important characters in this plot is the village headman, a widower, holds large tracts of land, well respected, his best friend, Anna's father. They both go out every evening and have a drink and get back. One day, David decides he has to go to the Goa city to study, seeks the permission of the elders, granted, and goes the boat the Blue River crosses and is off to Goa. Before he leaves, he tells his two best friends about his decision. Anna is shocked. She loves him deeply, but cannot summon up the courage to tell him that she loves him. First month, the boat comes back with a letter from David. Two months, three months, four months, the letter stops. One day, Anna's father comes home. He looks extremely tired and sick. Anna asks him, Papa, what's happened? What's wrong with you? He tells, Child, I just visited the village doctor. He suspects I have cancer and I won't live for long. I am duty bound as a father to fulfill some obligations and I need to get you married. Then here come the Christos Masters. I want you to marry the village headman. I'm not shocked. But dad is an old man, as old as you, I don't want to marry him. Anna's father says, he's a widower, has no children, extremely wealthy and is my best friend. I will have no further say in this matter. It is decided, child, go to sleep, you are getting married. That night, Anna decides to quit the house and run away from there to Goa where she wants to go meet David. The next day evening, she takes the jewelry in one hand and a suitcase and tries to make the exit to the front door. She notices her father coming in. She panics, 
leaves the jewel box and the suitcase, runs to the back door into the deep green forest, comes to the blue lake where the boatman is making his last journey for the day. She explains her plight, her helplessness and cries before the old man. The boatman takes pity on her and says, Child, I will drop you to Goa for one condition. This boatman has not had a business for the past one week and his family is starving. He says, Give me rupees 100, I will take you across and put you there. I know, please, helplessness. I do not have any money, I left it all behind. Give me the jewelry. But boatman, sir, I left the jewelry behind when I came. Then here comes the twister Toastmasters. He says, If you can't give me anything, give me a sari. You wretched old man, how can you ask for the sari of a young girl? Aren't you born and morally belong to a family? The boatman says, Look, child, if I do what I am doing now by dropping you to the other side, I will be in trouble with your father and the village headman. I am taking this because I am taking pity on you. If I can have the sari, I will sell it and feed my family. That's all I am interested in. She curses the boatman, gets off the boat and heads into the forest. As she walks into the forest, she meets the Swamiji. She falls at the feet of the Swamiji and asks him for a solution. Like all Swamiji's who have umpteen solutions to every problem in life and never give you one. The Swamiji says, Child, I have three solutions for you. One, go back to your father and marry the village man. Go back to the boatman, give him a sari and go to the town Goba. The third solution, sit, wait and watch. And he goes on to his ways of spiritual life and carries on. Anna sits there for quite some time, hears the shouts and what you call loud noises of the villagers. She turns around to see them marching, searching for her with fire in the hands of the stick. She quickly decides it's now or never. Goes on to the boatman, removes the side, gives it to him, reaches the other side of the bank of the river, <coughs> waits for morning to come. Cows herself with leaves and twigs, reaches the town of Goa, traces David and drinks the well. David is shocked to see her in a plight and condition. She breaks down and explains her position and situation to him. Taking pity, he, what you call, helps her into the house. Goa being Goa is all right for a man and a woman to live together. For a year, Anna tends to his needs, takes care of his food, everything, and they live a happy life. One day, David comes back home. He's very excited. He says, Anna, I got a letter from the US. My job has been confirmed. I have to leave. Anna tells you, go and leave me and go. I left everything in the village, I've come back. You're the only one I belong to. David says, "Is the other way around, Aina. I have taken care of you as a friend for the past one year. You know of my ambition to go to the US, and now my chance has come. Sorry, I have to leave. You two have to leave this house. Aina has no other option. <coughs> Leaves David's house, goes back to the same old boatman, who takes him to the blue river into the deep green forest and she enters a village. Times have changed a bit in the past one year. Her father has passed away and is no more. And as she crosses the village, she meets David, who is extremely happy to meet her. He doesn't ask her what happened in the past one year, nor is he interested. A few months pass, one day, David summons up the courage and tells Anna, 
and I, I loved you all this time. Will you marry me, Anna? Please, will you marry me? Anna suddenly realizes, he was a person I loved, David, the most. He didn't care for me and went off to the US. He has a person I do not care who loves me the most now, and I will marry him. She goes on to tell, let me be truthful to him, and tells that she stayed with David for one year in his house. David is shocked. In this village that they come from, a man and a woman live only if they're married. She stayed away. David stayed away tells Anna, you are second hand. I cannot marry you. We come to the end of the story, Toastmasters. I will throw a few questions to you and I want to see how you react to my questions. <coughs> David, one of the characters. Okay, who are the characters in this story, plot? David, 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 David. Children, one at a time. <laughs> <laughs> who are the characters? David, Joseph, and Anna. David, Joseph, and Anna. Village head. The village head and the father. The village head and the father. And Swami. You love the village head. You smile. Boatman and Swami. Boatman, Swami. So typically, we have something like six characters, main characters in this story and plot. David asked Anna to leave her house, left her alone and left to the US. How many of you think David was right in what he did? He was right. Yeah. Why, sir? Uh, he knows what he is being doing. That's the reason he has gone to her, you know, his parents first and then he would have taken a courage and then, you know, crossed the village and then studied hard to reach it. So that's the objective of life first, what you are supposed to do. Then comes the next uh, priorities of life. Either you are truthful to yourself, yourself and after five years you will start blaming him and then your relationship will not fit right. As a friend you have help, but that doesn't mean that you are going to sacrifice your dream. Super. He says, as a friend, I've helped enough. David has helped enough, and he's on to pursue his career. It's fine. Now let's flip the coin. You have an answer. If I flip the coin, after I flip the coin, how many of you think David was wrong in what he did? Raj, having accepted uh, to stay with him for a year, he should have come to an understanding that the lady has come all the way by sacrificing everything to stay with him forever. Though we had a dream to go to yes, in fact all of us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but not a great or a bad each one of us. But our uh, ambitions and dreams should not become a problem or a you know a deep trouble to someone else. So he would have made proper arrangements to tell her that you stay in my uncle's place or uh, women's paying guest house or whatever, I'll come back. Maybe I'll ask my employee to provide an accommodation to take you back. Or uh, I'll come back to find a job in India, maybe after two years. Maybe you can work in some company, stay here, I'll take care of you. What is the point in asking her to go back? You know the reason why Radhu is extremely well married and happy? <laughs> <laughs> because of his... Uh, but yeah. yeah, this is your perception yes. and uh, okay. Now, uh, sorry, I have a, I have a comment actually. It's not not an answer to one of your questions. And the comment is that this is a very culturally influenced situation, right? So, uh, it, and and this is typically and the responses that uh, we're giving. What's your take also, on my question? On which question? The first or the second? I'll, I'll give you a second question. Now. I, I will summarize what is all about. Okay. Okay. Uh, Joseph, the simpleton who deeply loved Anna, first said, please marry me. Then he said, no. Do you think he was right in what he did? Yeah, I think he was right. I would, I would say he was right because um, so the circumstances are different. The situation in which he loved the lady was different from, from now. And as an individual, I think it's his, uh, you know, he has the freedom to choose whether he still wants to accept the lady as she is or not. And he could have chosen the other way. But if it is his decision to have chosen not to accept her, then I, I think it's right. Kita says uh, what uh, Joseph did was right. I need to talk to 
Mr. Prasanna. <laughs> okay. How many of you think uh, Joseph was wrong in what he did? We'll ask the lady here. The lady's perspective. To speak for Joseph? Yeah. No, jo okay. she spoke okay. for Joseph. Okay, to speak for If you feel so, Joseph was wrong, tell us why. Uh, uh, Joseph loved the person. Um, if she has the same. Uh, uh, behavioral qualities like on on the basis of what he liked her before, he should have gone with her even now. Uh. I think we'll come back to what uh, Ramesh was pointing. The ethics, the social ethics and the personal ethics. <laughs> the person, uh, the place where Joseph stayed, the cultural system said that you, no, you, you adhere to the cultural system. But David went to Goa and he was forward thinker there also he was right on his own way. So I think it depends on where you put your stone. Yeah, at. Yes, um, my comment here is that probably Joseph didn't love her. It was more probably on, uh, for, from his point of view he wanted to possess her. So once he realized that she had already given what she could to someone else, he didn't need her anymore. He would never be the number one in her life or be the first one she was with. So he said, okay, I can't possess you that way. So. He actually confused possession with love. Yeah, her take is a total uh, different take. He says uh, he, he confused possession with love. The arguments will come from both What if she had, if she had hid it and he had known later, the marriage might have broken up. And probably he was right in his way, Anna was right in her own way, right? Coming to this lecherous character called the village headman. <laughs> <laughs> old old man, man, you her, excellent witch. Aspired to marry Anna. How many of you think he was right in what he did? Okay, uh, who thinks he's wrong? You think he was right? Yes, he was an old man. He, he was alone. He needed company. Yeah. I mean, from the point of view of society, from the point of view of humanity, don't you think he re needed companionship? Don't you think he deserved companionship? But in that case, even Anna needed companionship, right? No, th that's not the point. The point is he wanted to know if there was someone who was willing to spend the rest of her life with him. And he, he was justified in asking for that. He was an old man, he didn't have a family. But he could have always asked for no, the point is, uh, his age, you know, he didn't no, have no, to no, go The point is this, he didn't, he didn't ask for it. No, the, he, that's, okay, the question yeah. is... What My question is very, what do you call, uh, focused. On the was he right or wrong? Person. He said she was right. Why he was right? He didn't go ask for the hand. Hannah, the father proposed. And he said, it was not discussed. I don't think it was discussed. Anna's father had no, personal reasons why. Yes, uh, he was uh, selfish enough. He was wrong? Um, he, I think uh, he was wrong because uh, uh, marriage or you know living with somebody of your own age or you know a similar age makes more sense. When he's aspiring for a younger girl, it's more of attraction. Uh, because uh, maybe he can provide for her he really well, but then uh, maybe he wouldn't be able to uh, keep her happy mentally or in other ways which a younger woman would require. So in that way, I think maybe his intentions for himself were right, but uh, maybe for her it would have been wrong. She says a village headman, he has seen the larger picture, should have found a young guy from the village and married. In spite, this old man pulls it to her, herself and himself. So she says he's wrong, and she says uh, companionship. And uh, I'll respect Anna's father's words, and I didn't ask for it. And I'd be the best person because I understand the man. So, in your own ways, both of you have your perspectives fine. Now, coming to the Swamiji. Uh, was Swamiji being a Swamiji right in what he said? I think the Swamiji was a consultant. <laughs> 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 but I can say that with all honesty because I worked for all consulting organizations for five years. So what he basically did was he took this, understood the situation, heard the story, gave her, gave her back the same thing except in three dress plans. <laughs>